The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody! I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-hosts this week are the Cat and the Omega. Hello, everyone. Yes. Uh, it has been a week. We've we've got the results of we got the results of the test back, and we actually do have six new members on the site. Yay! You are <laughs> not the father. <laughs> That's where I thought he was going. No, yeah. I, I am not the father either. Although although on General Hospital they they do have a pregnancy, and I get and the next time I do the Poor Charlie podcast, I get to pull that line. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. Uh because it's one of those surprise pregnancies where she didn't realize she was pregnant until she talked to a doctor about her flu. Because you know that happens. That can ha- that can happen sometimes. Like it's very it's it's very rare, but you can still have your period when you're pregnant. Yeah. So it is it is actually possible for people not to know. I mean, for women not to know, I guess. It is it is possible. Although to be fair, in in, in the time span of the last time she had sex and the la- and the the particular episode, it had been only maybe about a month. Maybe, and of course nobody brings up periods on the show, so you know, uh, no periods ever. Why do why why do a lot of like like long running shows never do that? I've never seen that kind of talking on Doctor Who. I I, I don't. I, well, I think there was like one or two mentions on South Park a time or two, but that's mm. because it makes men uncomfortable. Well, it does. Fuck it, you know. You, you, because uh, apparently nobody paid attention in health class. Apparently, ah, uh, oh dear. But you know what makes me uncomfortable? What makes me uncomfortable is somebody is is, is somebody claiming Satan in, in whatever it is there is. And, that, and I'm trying to segue into the story you were telling us earlier, Omega. Is that is that a lead-in? Yes, I that is. Yes, that okay, is. Okay, so <laughs> one time at the store comes to Thespian Talk. So I, I work at a bookshop in Northern Ireland, and so we've got Fifty Shades of Grey, of course. You know, we've got the movie cover too, and it's on discount right now. It's part of our buy one get one half off. So it's in a, like a special display. So um, one of the girls who was on the floor um, was had to come up to the till, and uh, she said, "Hi, this look, lady's looking for Fifty Shades of Grey. Can you take it to her?" I was like, "Yeah, oh yeah, it's over here, ma'am. Sorry, we have it on display. So here it is." And she says, "Well, have you read it?" And I said, "Well, no, it's a, it's a dirty book, and I like to read dirty books." And she said, "She's looking at the back, and 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 I said, if you want to know the God's own truth, it's basically Twilight fan fiction that this woman self-published, and then when she was threatened with a lawsuit, she changed all the names and changed some of the stuff." So, but then it took off and blah, 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 blah. And she's like, oh, this girl, is she Irish? She wrote it. I said, no, nah, she's English, but E.L. James isn't her name. It's a pseudonym. This woman's like, I heard a very important show, having a, a very important discussion about this book. And I thought she was going to take the angle of, you know, oh, it's actually about emotionally re- abusive relationship, not BDSMs, you know, kind of scene. And I, I was ready to be like, I know, right? So I read an article about that, and she starts. She starts saying, "She's like, I, I listen to a radio station from America. It's called EWTN." And I was like, "Oh, the it's a Christian network. Yeah, I, I knew a priest who used to listen to it." She goes, "Oh yes, well, of course a priest would." And she starts going on about how like E. L. James chose the side of Satan, and this book is like <laughs> proliferating Satan. And like, I'm standing there, and and I'm not in the sticks. You know, I'm in the northwest corner of Northern Ireland, but. We're in a city, and I'm in a, I'm working a shop. and I work in a mall, and there's like commerce going on. There's pop music, you know, filtering in from the outside of the mall, and I'm like, I, I guess, you know. And just and she's a completely nice, like little old lady with her little Irish accent, but it was just so surreal. And she's like, oh, and it's just it's just Satan, you see, you know. Oh, and I don't know what this. It's all about the money, there, dear. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And so like and this went on for like 20 minutes, and I was like, eventually. You know, I heard the buzzer because we can buzz for backup. I was like, oh, she must need backup at the till. She's like, well, you just, what's your name? I was like, it's my school. So she follows me back to the till and, and Fiona's ringing her up. And she's like, and Amanda helped me so much. And you have to be, you don't read this book because, and she didn't even buy the book. <laughs> she bought other books. It was just, it was just so surreal. And then she was like, oh, you have both have a lovely day. And we're like, I, and then after she left, Fiona's like, did she tell you about Satan? I said, yes. Oh, God. It's like, it was so, and she like wasn't proselytizing. She didn't bring up God or Jesus or anything, but it was just so surreal. Yeah. Well, I, I do have to agree with her in some 
in, in uh, some aspects because from everything I've heard, all the research that I've done so far without actually diving in and reading the book or seeing the movie, which I refuse to pay for, by the way, you, you know, and the only way you're going to get me to see the movie is if some fan forces me to watch it, basically. And I mean fan With of the like movie. With like a gun. <laughs> It doesn't even have to be a gun. It just, you know, hey, you know what? You're watching this, or, or I, I, I give you no lambic type thing, you know, that sort of thing. But, um, but from everything I've heard about it, yeah, it's it's bringing the whole BDSM ideal into the mainstream a little bit more, which is good. Trouble is, you're bringing it in coated in a paint of abuse. It, yeah, it's, it's like just... I mean, I don't read dirty books because I, I kind of feel like I'm like barging in on someone's private time, even though they're fictional characters. But, I mean, just because I don't, that doesn't make it wrong, but, like, I, I don't know. I just, from people who are in that scene, who have read it, have said, this is not healthy. This is not what our scene is about. Yeah. It, it's just, no. No, honey, no. I mean, I, I am not. I, 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 full disclosure, I am kind of, like, curious about it, but I'm not into it, into it. But even I, knowing as little as I do, you just, I look at that as, like, no. No, that's that. That he may have, he may be a kinky motherfucker, but he's a kinky abusive motherfucker, and that's that's not cool. Yeah, it's just not cool. And the problem I'm not gonna have with it is the average person is not going to realize this and is going to go out and try this and find this romantic. You know, it's just like how some people found the fucking Edward, you know, stalking Bella and, and just appearing in her bedroom, kind of romantic. That's like no. That, that, that's that's stalking and breaking and entering and law breaking. Yeah, that's not romantic. Sorry, not in that context. Lawmaking could be romantic, but that's not part of it. Uh, and then the and oh, don't get started. Oh, don't get anybody started on the character of Bella Swan. Holy shit. Oh oh oh. Over to I tell you what comes, comes to mind with her. I the, when I worked at, at the bookstore at home, the our community relations manager was going to do an event. And she asked me, "Will you read the book and help me out with the event?" I got eight pages into the first one, and she's like, "I'm going to move to a town where the sun doesn't shine. Hope nothing bad happens." And I was like, "I can't deal with you already." I said, "Chris, I said I'm so sorry. I just can't do this. I'll look up the synopsis online. I just mm. no." Yeah. Oh, excuse me. But uh, with that, um, uh, oh lordy, how? Uh, but, Shout outs. We we just gotta do shout outs, otherwise, you know, yeah. Uh mine this week I actually have been tinkering around looking for some old computer games. Thank you, D pad, for playing the original uh Mega Man for DOS. Oh god. That that brought back childhood. So I went and grabbed that off of a site called myabandonware.com. And it's full of old DOS games that nobody, you know, rights have run out, nobody's really messing with them, nobody cares or whatever, you know. They're basically just like free for all companies are like, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever, you know, we're, we can't make, we're not making money off of it, we can't make money off of it because they're inferior products, that sort of thing, blah, 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 although, I, I did see a few slips in that every now and then, because there were a few th games in there that I did see on Steam, I was like, oh dear, but, uh, just, you know, my, my advice to that one would be, don't download the ones you can get, don't, don't grab the ones you can grab on Steam, just don't do that, uh, but the ones you can't get on Steam that are hard to get otherwise, legally or not, you know, they are there if you want to grab some, like, old PC games. I did I did end up grabbing, like, the old Mega Man for DOS, because I know we still have a copy around here somewhere. Uh, and, yeah, it is just as tough as I remember. <laughs> oh, lordy. Uh, so, uh, Omega, do you have any shout-outs this week? My shout-out is still going to be for our good friend, Rap Critic. I think by next week... He needs to make the the next. I think the twentieth. So this coming Friday, he needs to make the next part of his goal to um to try to get to Italy to sing opera and be operatic. So yeah, he's got to go fund me. I think that it's been like for the past two weeks you've had it up. So if you just follow the same the same link that Gomer puts up. But if you have some money, you can you can throw it to him. Help make his dream come true. I think he needs to make another thousand dollars by the by the next deadline, which is the twentieth. And if you can't, uh, please just pass it along on social media. You know, yeah. you might have friends outside the review of us. Everyone does. At least I hope so. Maybe yeah. they can help out, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, um, Kat, I'm, I'm going to ask anyway, even though you probably don't have one. Do you have a shout-out? I, I have no shout-outs. Try yeah. to try to contain your surprise. Oh, no. I'm <gasps> surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do want to throw an extra one in there. I did mention we did pick up six new uh, producers on the site. Uh, we did pick up the unemployed historian. 
And, and oh, I like him. He's such he's such a good guy. Yes, we also picked up a Dubious Khan, uh, who is current who currently has a new episode of the Idiot Box up on the site. Uh, we also have a uh, Network Next Network Next TV, which is the name he's under on the site. Who does he, he's another comic reviewer, and his latest one is um, let's see, it's on uh the Bla- in Blackest Night, which is a two parter from the Justice League. I think it's like the Justice League cartoon. We also have picked up Those Girls with a Podcast, uh, hosted by Greer, Greer Young and a bunch of her friends, which that's they're a lot of fun to listen to. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much what it says on the tin. You know, they're, they're a bunch of girls. They just sit there and talk, and they have fun. Um, also picked up uh, Big Heater Media, which does the, – the one that they sent to me was basically a spoof of a children like, – like one of those um, – uh, cable access uh, shows or what have you, uh, uh, local access news shows, whatever. But but it's one of those things. He has the puppet and 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 I, the name of it is slipping from me, and I I am, I am so bad at that. But uh, what I find what's interesting about them is they're really close to Bloody Chuckle Studios, <laughs> like in location. So it's like got two producers from like the same area. Well, there's kind of precedence for that. I'm in I'm in one part of the county. I'm and and uh, Steve the Wicked's in another part of the county around here. And we also picked up, picked up rather, not picked up, uh, picked up somebody by the name of Rabbit Abby, who does music reviews. And she's also going to be working on doing some improv stuff that she's going to be adding to her own YouTube channel. So keep an eye out for them. Uh, a few of them already have some new stuff up on the site as we're recording the show. Hopefully the others will start posting within the next week. I, I really encourage this. I hope so. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm anxious to see what you guys think of them. I'm looking forward to seeing how, how well they'll do on the site. Uh, I, and believe me when I say I think I racked up some sleep debt with the final decisions because everybody who sent something in did very, very well. Is just... Uh, uh. So so I know how the people... I, I know how whoever's making the decisions over on uh, Geek Vision have felt when it, when they, when it comes time to, the, to uh, say, hey, uh, we're picking you up, but we're not going to pick you up. So... Because a lot of people send in really great things, and um, you know, it's just a difficult decision. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, oh. So I also learned a new word this week. Brand okay. new word. Um. Well, well, actually, Holly and I learned a new word from a uh, creature. From creature S H who does. I, I, doesn't he do like title cards for uh, Diamanda? Yeah. Uh, yes, and he's one of the ones who runs her Tumblr. Yes. So. Uh, he he. He's taught... good. He's good people. Creature. He's good people. Yes. He is good people, and he taught us the German word for ass violin. Ass violin. Yes, and it's pronounced. I, I wrote down this uh, tra- tra- bleh, pronunciation rather. Well, well, translation too technically. It's pronounced Auschgeiger. 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 So, in what circumstance would you use an ass violin? I have no idea, but it just like, sounds Like, is really it great. like one that you play with your ass? Is this like? Well, a euphemism so, for farting, like. It could what? Be. You know I why? Never, I never thought to ask that. I just think the word is awesome, and it should be used in our daily speech whenever possible. I. Okay. Although in my case, it would probably be used in the middle of a rant. I need to to seek clarification from him because it, is there like an ass accordion? <laughs> like. <laughs> I, is there an ass orchestra we need to know exactly, about? Exactly, yes. Oh, that is a very good question. Creature, I, I, I'm pretty sure he's listening, right? I'm pretty sure he's listening. Creech, you know, you know, let us know. Let us know, man. <laughs> Inquiring <laughs> minds want to know. Yes. The Berlin, the Berlin Philharmonic Ass Orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> is proud to present the Nutcracker Suite. Oh, God. <laughs> Get it? Get it, ass <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm done. Oh, oh yeah. So, so we let's hit our news. And Omega, you're originally from Pennsylvania, right? I am indeed. Yes. Yes. So, so this this first news story. Oh, good. Uh, authorities allege that a Western Pennsylvania teenager charged in the shooting death of another teen took a photo of himself with the victim and sent it to a friend. That is not the time for selfies. No, that is not. Like, you shouldn't be murdering each other anyway, but that's especially not the time for selfies. Yeah. The 16-year-old youth is charged in Westmoreland County with a homicide and firearms count in the death of 16-year-old Ryan Mangan, who was found Wednesday evening in his Jeanette home. 
coroner's office is withholding details such as the location of the wound and the caliber of the weapon. A Excuse me. Authorities said in a criminal complaint that the mother of another youth said her son received a photo showing the suspect with the victim after he had been shot and also received text messages from the suspect saying, told you I cleaned up the shells and Ryan was not the last one. It's bad enough. You're, you're, it's bad enough this kid is, is, is crazy enough to just kill some fucker and, and clean, you know, admittedly he cleaned up the shells. Okay. You know, you know. You know, he's tidier than most, although I would have also cleaned up the body and not taken a selfie with the body. That's not one of those things you need to brag about on your cell phone or your social This media. is Westmoreland County. This is out near Pittsburgh. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> that's, that's a part of the of the town. Like, it's kind of on the edge of Pennsylvania. Like, Pittsburgh and Philly, they're the good parts. And then you have Pennsylvania, the part in between. Pennsylvania. I'm not the only one who calls it that. It's such a relief. It is, no, that it really is. Uh, you know, honestly, until you two have mentioned it, I've never heard it called Pennsylvania. Well, the saying is Pennsylvania is Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and Alabama in between. But uh, a lot of people just say Pennsylvania anyway. Uh, yeah, and a lot of mountains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Believe me, I've driven that shit enough to know, yeah. Like yeah. up the Poconos, or then there's that... The, the bit that's in uh, uh, north central Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. But, uh, yeah, our, our next one is going to be taking a shot because we're going to Florida. And, and, it's... and the only reason I put this in here is because it's out of Okoy, which is around near Orlando, where I have family. And, and I have to ask if any of my family was involved in this because there are teenagers in my family that live in Orlando. Orange County deputies are trying to figure out why hundreds of teenagers suddenly rushed into the movie theater at West Oaks Mall in Okoye Saturday night. Deputies say as many as 900 kids, described as being in middle or high school, attempted to rush the theater at once. Fifty Shades of Grey is not that important. I'm sorry. It's, like, with numbers like that, it sounds like it had to have been like a flash mob attempt. Is the only thing that I can think of. That's I, what it sounds like. That might be. Because who knows, like, 800 friends. Yeah. I know, right? Uh, I mean, well, I don't know. I'm like, I, okay, if everybody was able to, to gather up and, and do shit, I might be able to gather up 800 people, but, you know. But that's between Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, you know. Oh. Let's see, about 200 teenagers were able to get in before the security gates were closed. Witnesses said several fights broke out with reports of shots fired. Well, there's your first mistake. Welcome Cell to America. Yeah. <laughs> Cell phone video recorded by a witness captured the chaos. Well, I, I wish I had it. I don't think the news article had it when I grabbed it, but it'll it'll be up in the next couple of days, I'm sure. At that point, since we're dealing with 800 to 900 juveniles, they called for assistance from surrounding agencies, said Lieutenant Paul Hopkins of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. We all formed together and were successfully able to get all these kids out of the mall area. At least one person was arrested, but deputies said there were no injuries. So, okay, good, no injuries. That, that's fine. One arrest, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm surprised. Hopefully the kid more. with a gun. Yeah, I hope so. It's, it's like, what you doing with a gun? You were going downtown. Uh, that's just weird, man. It's like a coworker of mine was like, oh my gosh, you're American, right? I was like, yeah. And she's like, did you have a gun in America? I was like, why would I have a gun? And she's like, you know, because you could. I'm like, who am I going to shoot? She goes, I don't know, intruders? I was like... You know that I lived in the suburbs, right? And she's like, I don't know. Americans always have guns to shoot intruders with. And I was like, that, 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 no, not me anyway. <laughs> no, I, I don't have a gun. I have two swords. I don't have a gun. I don't. I used to have a sword. I lost it somewhere. Yeah. I think I think my two swords right now are locked up in the gun cabinet with my dad's guns. You know, because we have kids running around. So. Oh, well, yeah. Know. You know, I mean, and my dad, you know, yeah, he, you know. Ex, you know, military vet, you know, retired military. He's gonna have guns around. He makes sure that he keeps them away from the goddamn kids. So my dad is a responsible gun owner. Why can't people more? Why can't more people be like him? <clears throat> Just saying. Uh, so so we go from that. We go to oh god, wherever the hell. Oh, Hong Kong. And I don't know how real this is. I don't know if it is real, if it isn't real. Snopes hasn't said anything as far as I know. But just in case, 
being born pregnant is so rare that it has only been documented 200 times. But no, it does this is happen. this is real. This is this real. is real. Yeah, because we're talking about it at work. This actually is a thing that can happen. Okay. But it's not what people think. Okay. Now, researchers are reporting this week in the Hong Kong Medical Journal on the November 2010 case of a newborn girl thought to have two tumors in her abdomen that were found to be 8- to 10-week-old fetuses instead. <laughs> Weighing half an ounce and a third of an ounce, they were far enough along to each have four limbs, spine, a ribcage, intestines, and an anus, and to be connected through an umbilical cord to a single placenta-like mass. So she was not only pregnant, but she was pregnant with twins. That's, wow. Well, basically what people are pretty sure this is, and I think this is the most likely explanation, is that originally the mom had three fetuses, but what's called, I think it's called like parasitical um, fetus. It's basically like the, the placenta couldn't support all three, and then the one dominant fetus ended up absorbing the other two. Oh, wow. Well, that can happen. Uh -huh. Oh. So, that sounds like some crazy sci-fi shit right there. It does. It's, like... it's also possible to be pregnant with children uh, at the same time from more than one father. There is a very, very, very rare genetic condition where you can still ovulate while you're pregnant. And there was a case of this woman, and I think it was like somewhere in the, in the Northwest of America in like the 1970s, was pregnant with triplets by three different men. Now, they were different, you know, ways along. But, yeah, it is possible. Wow. Oh, how do you how do you have them at different times? Oh my god! Well, I think she ended up having to have all three of them by cesarean and wait, having to wait until the least the youngest was able to survive outside the womb. Wow! Wow! Oh dear, just just. That sounds like that would be really complicated. That does sound really complicated. Well, uh, all three children lived. Well, according to the study, it was a, a paper that we read in science class in high school. Yeah. Oh wow! I'm. I'm I, I admit the first first uh, first mention of a woman being pregnant by two different guys at once. I'm thinking, okay, did she get pregnant at an orgy or something? Well, I mean, she it sounded like she slept around, like, yeah. like she at least had unprotected sex. So she, the the three different children that were in her womb were all her biological children, but just with three different fathers. Right. Because she had this this condition and didn't realize it. Because huh. I mean, I guess if you're pregnant, you're like, oh, I don't need to worry about. Um, you know, contraception, I'm already pregnant. It's not like I'm going to get pregnant again, but that did not work. Yeah. Uh, that just goes to show, kids, use birth control. Use protection if you're going to have sex. Even if you think you're not going to get pregnant from something because, well, someone, rather, because you've already got a, you know, you got you got a little fetus in there. It could, you could be proven wrong really fast. Also, STDs. Yeah, that don't too. Want them. No, nasty. no, we don't want those either. Uh, the baby girl carrying the fetuses underwent successful surgery to remove them at just two weeks of age. Um, so I, I guess the baby's okay. Uh, they, ca they call it the condition fetus and fetu, which is is uh, thought to occur in one in 500,000 births worldwide, and was the second such case to re be reported in the region, region being like Hong Kong. Uh, the World Health World Health Organization has classified it as a type of cancer called mature teratoma, but researchers write the theory of, de of demise multiple pregnancy has gained much support recently. More evidence is needed to confirm either theory. In the last year, the doctors found a 44-year-old calcified fetus in an 84-year-old woman. I want to say we actually talked about that particular one. I remember reading about it and kind of vomiting in my mouth a little. Yeah, because it's like, how the fuck do you... how? how? How do you it's not just, realize that? Just it's the word calcified fetus just sound disgusting. Yeah, because I'm sitting here, I'm imagining a, a, a fetus that looks like a concrete fetus inside a woman. Well, here's the thing. If if it, if it was 44 years old and she was 84, so this must have been she was pregnant when she was 40, that could be right around the beginning of menopause. So if she stopped getting her period, she might just think, oh, I'm going through menopause. So yeah. that's not, I, I can see that, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, and I'm pretty sure she would should have had checkups between now and then, between then and then, you know? Yeah, but depending on how far along the fetus was when it when it died, you know, and if it, if it was somewhere where it didn't cause, a, its, its presence didn't cause a problem, you know. It's like the people who, like, you know, were in a war and took shrapnel, or, you know, were shot but didn't realize it until, you know, they're having an x-ray 20 years later for something else. And like, oh, you know, you get a bullet in you. Oh, I didn't know. Or, or what was it, that guy that had, like, 
what was it, his uh, turn signal or, or, or some kind of t- signal, like, stuck in his arm for however many years? Yeah, after an accident that he didn't even know had gotten yeah. in there. I remember yeah. that. Oh, yeah. I, I, it still it still kind of makes me wonder how people don't realize that. Because maybe, maybe it's just me, because I, I would probably end up being like, oh, this feels weird. What the hell is this? You know? But then again, that's just me. People are all different. And speaking of people, I, I want to remind people that corporations are not people. And if corporations were people, then this particular corporation, I would want to, um... Well, you, you remember the scene of Baby's Day Out when the baby sets the guy's crotch on fire? And his t- the two goons have to, like, you know, get the fire put out. And so one of them tosses him on the ground, and he starts stamping on his nuts to put out the fire. <laughs> That's what I want to do to this particular corporation. Uh, out of Albuquerque, Frances Wilson is meticulous about her bills. She has to be. She lives on a very tight budget. The 79-year-old lives on Social Security, so when her senior living rent check disappeared last month, she knew something was wrong. She soon realized she had enclosed her $235 rent check along with her, with her 2069 Comcast cable check. She called Comcast and an employee confirmed that the company had both checks. In fact, the employee told her, Comcast cashed the rent check even though it wasn't made out to the massive cable company. That is so many kinds of illegal. Yeah, that is illegal on both on Comcast's part and on the bank's part. Banks should have realized, hey, holy shit, this isn't made out to Comcast. Uh-uh. You know, we don't, we don't cash that for them. No. They should have, what the bank should have done was say, hey, guys, um, this is, this is the wrong thing. Hi. You know. And that's bad enough. Comcast said it wouldn't give Wilson a reimbursement check. They offered to credit her account so her basic service would be paid up for much of the year. Yeah, yeah. That's still not going to pay her rent. No, that's not even. Uh, Cindy Parsons, a Comcast spokeswoman that, ha- that happened because... No, said that happened because no employee ever touched the payments. The system is all automated. Um... Then you need to fix your automated system, asshole. Again, so many flavors of illegal. Yeah. Wilson had to come up with an additional $235 for her rent payment. And Parsons said mistakes like this have happened in the past, but they're quick to fix them. In Wilson's case, Parsons said that wasn't done. We reached out to the customer immediately and apologized, and our big focus was to correct the situation as soon as possible, Parsons said. Comcast said it was looking into the problem and would talk to the employee who handled Wilson's case. Within an hour of KRQE News 13 calling Comcast, a fix was in the works. The company gave her a $235 reimbursement check, $235 cash, and a $235 credit on her cable bill. Oh. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. It's like, and here's the thing, though. I have, I, I, the, the way this is reading to me, is that Comcast, if nobody brought it to their attention, they wouldn't have done anything, I don't think. Because, Probably not. Because it's all automated, so it's not our fault. Uh, except uh, you guys are the ones who put the automated system in place. There should be something there to, you know, to kind of fail-safe a, a bunch of this stuff, you know? Or well, the fail-safe you would think would be the bank, which is probably also all automated for yeah. such a large company's money. Yeah. I don't imagine any person sees the check after it comes in. Yeah, I would hope so. Oh. Yeah, fail on the bank, fail on Comcast, especially because, like I said, uh, the way it's reading, yeah, yeah, we're not gonna. Oh, oh, the news media. Oh shit. Um, um, um. There you go. Money, 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 money. Ha ha ha. We're nice now, right? Except See, it's so still... bad that that's what it takes. Mm. You know, because. And the thing is that it hurts everybody else when that happens, too. Because pretty much any time something happens that it isn't what someone wants, like, fine, I'm going to go to the media. And you're like, you know what? You really can't go to the media about the fact that we're out of chicken nuggets. Yeah. You know? Like to use a McDonald's example. Yeah. It's just, that would be a stupid reason to go to the press. This was obviously a really good reason to go to the press. But... But it's sad that it takes the press to get some of these larger corporations to just do the right thing. The right thing, which, again, they eventually did, but not before somebody had to go to the news with it, would be to just reimburse her pay- her rent check. Maybe a little bit more for, you know, for her 
inconvenience. But at the very least, re, you know, send her back her rent check. Say, hey, this isn't ours. You accidentally sent this to the wrong company. Here you go. Ah. Uh, ay, 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 ay. And the next one. <laughs> I've never really talked about the prayer breakfast on this show or any show, really. Because it's usually something that just kind of, you know, passes me by. Because it, it, it really, nothing really happens from it. Except when you're President Obama and you actually, you know, speak the truth. Uh, president Obama has never been one to go easy on America. As a new president, he dismissed the idea of American exceptionalism, noting that Greeks think their country is special too, which is true. He labeled the Bush-era interrogation practices, if euphemistically called harsh for years, as torture. Yeah. America, he has suggested, has much to answer for given its history in Latin America and the Middle East also true. His latest challenge came Thursday at the National Prayer Breakfast. At, the, at a time of global anxiety over Islamist terrorism, Obama noted pointedly that his fellow Christians, who make up a vast majority of Americans, should perhaps not be the ones who cast the first stone. Humanity has been grappling with these questions throughout human history, he told the group, speaking of the tension between the compassionate and murderous acts religion can inspire. Unless we get on our high horse and think this is unique to some other place, remember that during the Crusades and the Inquisition, people committed terrible deeds in the name of Christ. In our home country, slavery and Jim, Clor Jim Crow all too often was justified in the name of Christ. Which is true. You know, just... Just as many people used the Bible against slavery and against Jim Crow as they did for it. And what he's pointing out is people used it for very horrible things. I have no problem with that. Do either of you have a problem with that? No. Not at all. No. I didn't think so. Uh, some Republicans were outraged! The oh, when aren't they outraged? I, I know, agree. I know. It's like, it's like, I am an agnostic atheist. I am going to go and take a piss. Outrage! Oh. Yeah. That sort of thing. Uh, some Republicans were outraged. The president's comments this morning at the prayer breakfast are the most offensive I have ever heard a president make in my lifetime, said former Gen Virginia Governor Jim Gilmore, naturally a Republican. He has offended every believing Christian in the United States. No, he hasn't. My girlfriend's Christian. You know what? She's She thinks the president's spot on. So, no. Yeah, hashtag not all Christians. <laughs> uh this goes further to the point that Mr. Obama does not believe in America or the values we all share. No! He, he, he is criticizing. The, the country is not above criticism. And if you actually take a look at the news and the rest of the world, <laughs> there's a reason why Omega's, what was it, your friend, work, work, workmate, um, um, hmm? the, the person who asked you about the guns? Oh, my coworker. Coworker, yeah. There's a reason why Omega's coworker asked if she owned guns when she lived here. Hi, welcome to the American stereotype. <laughs> well, I mean, I heard about the story when it first happened, and I was, I'm pretty sure that one there was some GOP senator or congressperson that said, you know, oh, that's not really what the Crusades were. The Christians weren't involved in the Crusades. Or, I'm sorry, the, the, it was the, I'm sorry, it was the Inquisition. He's like, oh, Christians weren't involved in the Inquisition. I was like, you a lying liar of liar town. Unless you mean Dragon Age Inquisition, then no. <laughs> like, wait, have you actually read a history book? And I mean, not a history book where they make up everything, like in Texas. Yeah. Oh my I mean, God. I will admit, I didn't read much about the Inquisition, but from what I understand, that was coming from, what was it, the Catholic Church? And let's see, Catholic... That, that is a sect of Christianity. So, yeah, it, you know, just just by connecting the dots there, you know. And then, of course, the Crusades. We all know about the Crusades. Holy shit. It's just basically like the level of cognitive dissonance in the right in America is just so staggering. I mean, it's it's basically funny at this point. You know, yeah. it's like, President Obama breathes oxygen, and everyone's like, well, just goes to show he doesn't care about nitrogen, what real Americans breathe. I mean, it's, it's, uh, makes me ashamed. Like, people are like, what about your country? I'm like, shh, we don't talk about it. I mean, I'm, I'm from Canada. Yes. I've been, I've been told to say I'm Canadian, if I ever get any shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm Canadian, eh? Mm. Oh, no. I'm from Toronto. <laughs> I don't mess around with the States, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
And that, that, that's a sad that, – that, that says a lot about how other countries think of America, by the way. Yeah, okay, you know, we, we can have our patriotism, fine, you know, believe in your country, but believe in your country in a way that – in which your country can get better, can improve upon itself, and not just sit there stagnant and, and think that everything is okay when it's not, when it really is not. Uh, the idea that, that you can't be – like you can't criticize your own country because it's unpatriotic or it's un-American is absolutely ridiculous. We do it every single day. But it's like if a world leader does it, like if, if Obama does it, they're, oh, he's not fucking American. He doesn't love America. No, he loves America. Therefore, he's trying to make people aware of its issues. He's talking about the shit that nobody wants to talk about because that's his job. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I had um... – I had a discussion with somebody, and this was this was years ago, when um, he was like midway through his his first term, that basically it's it's a form of racism because it's the idea that Obama is an American. It's the it's not the it's like oh there is an African American president, and people just can't so can't get over that that you know they just can't even justify that he's american like oh well he must be some dirty foreigner you know this this must be the way it's he can't possibly be american because we would never have an african american president this must be some kind of conspiracy there's actually books and movies out there that like have this whole conspiracy that start in like the 1950s for christ's sake like that it almost sounds like some kind of like Marvel origin movie, like the many conspiracies that came together to ensure that this child would be born and he would one day become president. It's 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 crazy. And I say that, I mean, I don't mean that mental illness is involved. I mean, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. Oh, and, and the article I've got in here it is it is a bit long, but the meat of it is basically, you know, Republicans don't like it when when the president talks bad about America. They don't like the president anyway. And some of them will claim, well, yeah, he, it's because he's a Democrat, and I and I can believe that, you know. Cause... Yeah, that's fine. If you if you disagree with the with the president's policies, and if you disagree with you know the the ideas that he has for the country, that's fine. That's totally what you're allowed to do. Mm-hmm. But don't straw man the guy, you know. Yeah. Don't disagree with him just to be petty little shitheads. I swear to God, the whole all conservatives are fucking five years old, and they do everything just to be petty. It's yeah. it's kind of nauseating. It is. It's just god damn it. Ugh. And of and of course, it recently came out that that I think it was like when he was first running or whatever. He said he was he was against gay marriage or whatever. And now we, it's suddenly coming to light. It's like yeah, you guys realize I was saying that just to get your vo- you guys' votes, right? It's just 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 getting votes away from the Republican Party. I'm just saying that. You know that, right? Uh huh. Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting well, I mean, like, he, he yeah. did say that his views were evolving, and, and that's personally fine. I mean, a lot of a lot of Democrats in the '90s voted against gay rights and gay marriage, and have said, you know, I wish I hadn't done that. You know, I it was a knee jerk reaction, and you know, I f- felt my constituency wouldn't wouldn't go with it. And you know, as long as they do the right thing now, well, okay, I'll for, I'll forgive you. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. the '90s. We did a lot of all a lot of us did a lot of stuff we weren't proud of. Oh yeah, some like, of us more than the, the leggings Gulf and the War. Hair. I was thinking more of like the Gulf War. I'm not, I was thinking not leggings me personally, and big hair. There you go. <laughs> oh man, if I could get my ripped jeans. Okay, if I could get my body back from the '90s where I was actually thin, my ripped jeans, my flannel shirt, my ratty like band T-shirt, and my wallet with a chain. Oh man, it was so great. Let's get some jinkos up in here. Yeah, I want to be my little lesbian self from the '90s again. <laughs> My, with my 15-year-old angst, there you mooning go. after mooning after the first chair trombone player. Aww. I know, right? Mm. I took I took Latin because of her. I learned to play the trombone and I played uh, softball. So mm. I learned so many skills because of this crush. <laughs> wow. Just... Extreme crushing edition. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I like I was it was back in the day. I was like, I don't know why. I just really want to be this girl's best friend. She's just so awesome. I like totally love talking to her didn't understand anything about it. Yeah. Well, because you live in America, and at that time, America was against gay people in, in schools and everything. Oh, wait, what? that still happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, lordy. So Pretty this, much. Yeah, speaking of gay people, Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> That's what so often do. Yes. Montgomery, Alabama. 
Alabama's stand against gay marriage crumbled Friday as judges in most countries sided with federal courts rather than countries. their own chief justice. Counties, counties rather. I misread. I fail. <laughs> uh. it, you're fired. You're fired from Thespian Talk. This is a coup. We're taking over. Oh yeah, right. Uh-huh. It's now going to be a girl show. <laughs> yes. This is now. This is now the, the the first the first colony of Lesbian Talk. <laughs> <laughs> We've taken over. over the motherland. There you go. Oh, uh, but. Most counties, rather, sided with the federal courts rather than their own chief justice, a Republican who once called homosexuality an inherent evil. Many counties, rather, in the Bible Belt state began issuing the licenses to same-sex couples after the latest strongly worded letter from U.S. District Judge Callie Grande. 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 Something like that. Sounds explosive. I just want to say it again. Grande. Grande. (laughs) Fasa. Say it again. (laughs) Mufasa. <laughs> Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. Okay. Oh, it's, it's, it's not for now. All right. So she, mm-hmm. she said Thursday that a judge could no longer deny marriage licenses to gays and lesbians, reiterating her ruling striking down the state's ban on same-sex marriage. I've done already told you once. Yeah. These numbers... Don't were... make me come down there. Oh, yeah. She will. She'll do it, too. These numbers represent... I am a U.S. district judge, and you will not question me. <laughs> Damn, girl. There sure. you go. These numbers represent a seismic shift in favor of equality and justice. Resistance to happy, loving, and committed same-sex couples getting married is quickly crumbling throughout the state, said Fred Sains, a top spokesman for the Human Rights Campaign, which has been lobbying to expand gay rights nationwide. Grenade's ruling enabling gay, gays to get licenses went into effect Monday after the U.S. Supreme Court declined to intervene. But then, Alab- but even then, Alabama Chief Justice Roy Moore, fuck you, said county judges were not bound by her decision, except they totally are. It is my duty to speak up when I see the jurisdiction of our courts being intruded in a law- by unlawful federal authority, Moore insisted in an interview with the Associated Press later Monday. About 20 of Alabama's 67 counties allowed gays and lesbians to wed on Monday. By Friday, that number had jumped to at least 47, the Human Rights Campaign said. Other counties said they would revisit the decision next week. Um, it's pretty clear. Feds say, yeah, you have to let this happen. And the Supreme Court, Supreme Court refused to, to take the stay. And they were like, we, we got bigger problems to deal with than you. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Alabama. No one loves you. Yeah. It's, it's like, just, just, just let them get married. Everybody, you know? I, I want to see, I want to see gay people walking out of the courthouse in Dothan, Alabama. Uh, Grenade's ruling made Alabama the 37th state where gays and lesbians can legally wed. It also continued her family legacy of bringing sweeping change to a place where many people didn't yet welcome it. Her grandfather was Richard Grives, a federal appellate, appellate judge whose rulings helped dis- desegregate the South despite resistance to the civil rights movement in the 50s and 60s. Judge Rives, my grandfather, is really, really is my personal hero, Grenade said during her 2001 Senate confirmation hearing. She denied then that judicial activism describes what her grandfather did or what she might do. The issues on which he more or less broke with precedent were ones which really flew in the face of the Constitution, she said. I think a judge will always be correct if the decisions that he or she makes are consistent with the plain language of the Constitution. While many Republican politicians in Alabama criticized her ruling last month and tried to link her to Obama administration policies, Grenade was appointed by the federal bench by President George W. Bush. (laughs) 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 That's great. You know what that is? That's a Schadenfreudigasm. Yes. That's what that is right there. <laughs> uh, so good. Oh, yeah. I, I, I like that this family is like, we are going to drag this fucking horrible state into the modern age, kicking and screaming if we have to. Yes. Just please don't kick the taint. I'm living here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do it. Don't kick the taint. No. <laughs> just, Help. Just, Yes, we will, we will we will kick down – well, okay. Well, technically you could kick the tank because that's where Tallahassee is. Okay. Uh, more stand against federal authorities surprised no one in Alabama where the 68-year-old jurist who ran twice for governor burnished his conservative image a decade ago with a losing fight to keep his Ten Commandments statue inside the Alabama Judicial Building. While Moore again appeared on the losing side Friday, a longtime supporter said the said the 81 percent of Alabama voters who chose to ban gay marriage in 2006 would appreciate his stand. I don't know if it's 81 percent anymore, but you know what? It is entirely possible that a majority of the people can be fucking wrong. And this is one of those cases, you know. You, you, you 
it should never be possible for human rights to come up for a vote. No. Because that's just not what we do here. No, that's not what we're supposed to do here. You know, you, you are a human being. Okay, you have the same rights and opportunities as everybody else. That should be the end of it. It doesn't matter if you're white, if you're black, if you're gay, if you're straight, if you're male, if you're female, if you're non-binary, if you're all binary. It doesn't matter. It really does all not matter. All of the genders and all of the sexes, they will all be yours. Yeah. I, either there is equality or there is not. That's it. Those are the only two states you can be in in this country. There, either there is equality or there is not. Yeah, well, right now we are in the not equality, even though people would like to say home of the free, land of the brave, home of the free. Bullshit! And that's kind of funny because the, the conservatives, you know, are the same kind of people that back in the 50s and 60s were like, we have freedoms, we don't want to be like godless communists, pinko, Russia, blah, 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 things and stuff. And they're the same kind of people that basically want to make us like communist Russia. Well, okay, it's not communist anymore, but whatever's going on in Russia again, you know? They're like they, the ones who want to start up their fine bromance with, with Vladimir Putin, you know? And I'm they, like, seriously? They're the same kind of people who uh, would would talk about how evil Sharia law is, but really just want to have the uh, the Ten Commandments instead of a constitution. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's just... Like I said, the, the the levels of cognitive dissonance that would go into thought processes like that, that, that would be considered a delusional thought process. Like, if this wasn't about something political, if this was about like something normal, that would be considered delusional. You would be evaluated for mental illness. Like, uh, I don't even know. You should. Yeah. They should be. They should be. Yeah. Well, you can't. You can't. The thing. The thing is that religion and politics really do need to fall outside of the realm of mental illness, except in certain circumstances, because then you run the risk of stigmatizing a lot of people with a very wide net. Yeah, that is true. Um. There is one. I didn't put it in the file because I didn't know if we were going to need it. But um, we've got just like one short story left. But before we get to that one, uh, because I do want to end on a higher note, um, more about um, Christians being offended. Uh, I got this one off of YoungCons.com, Young Conservatives. Um, if you're a Christian and a fan of the Big Bang Theory, prepare to be infuriated by actor Jim Parsons, who plays Sheldon on the popular television show. I'm infuriated. Yes. No, con- continue. I'm sorry. I was just. You know, kidding. <laughs> You, 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 Acting. You, yes. You are. You are. You are. Your infuriated body is ready. I'm Shakespeareanly offended. <laughs> Tell you what. There we go. Parsons is set to st- set to star in a new Broadway play where he basically mocks God and riffs on Bible passages. Not cool, <gasps> Mr. Parsons. Yes. Not cool at all. From the New York mm-hmm. Times. No, Mr. Parsons is actually going to play the Almighty on Broadway beginning May 5th in the new comedy, An Act of God by David. Jagerbomb? 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 Well, his, his, his Twitter. Oh, that'd be great. I love Jagerbombs. <laughs> his, his, he, has, his, he has a Twitter called, like, Tweets of God or something. And, like, a, it, like a millions and millions of people follow it, and that account only follows one person, and that is Justin Bieber. Oh, wow. And it's amazing <laughs> and wonderful. And if you don't follow, you should. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, he's a former head writer and executive producer of The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, who I understand is leaving. And 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 off one of my also understand the the uh, the outcry was so bad that he went back the next night and he was like, did I die? Uh, poor man made him think he was dead. I I, that's, I like John Stewart. He seems like a nice guy. Yeah. The 90 minute production is based on Mr. Yeverbaum's 2000 book, The Last Testament, a memoir by God, a swirl of satirical riffs on biblical passages, jokey anecdotes and comic pronouncements. Hey, it sounds like my kind of thing. I need to pick it up. Here's a little taste of what to expect from this piece of garbage. They they crossed out the word art. Courtesy of MRC president Brent Bozell, who reviewed the book the play is based on. Yeverbaum's God is a doofus and full of imperfections. In the beginning, God created the world so he could dominate someone. In my humble opinion, thou canst hardly tell, call thyself Lord if thou hast created no other beings to lord it over, Yeverbaum imagines. I had a burning ambition to rule the world, but I knew such a world was not going to create itself. No fully formed planet was going to suddenly appear and say, Here, Lord, take these twenty burnt offerings, or Here, Lord, take these fifty infidel heads, or Here, Lord, take these two hundred years of religious warfare. I, I kind of like that. This sounds great. Yeah. One of God's better qualities, apparently, is his strange loathing for the word of God. 
The Bible condemns homosexuality, for example, but Yeverbaum's God actually created Adam and Steve first. Yet it cre he created Adam to tend the Garden of Eden, but w then he, when he grew lonely, God made for him a hunk unburdened by excess wisdom, ripped and cut and hung like unto a Unburdened by excess wisdom. <laughs> That's so great. It's like, I love the boy. He's so pretty, but damn, mm. he's dumber than toast. Yes. <laughs> he's ripped and cut, hung like unto a fig tree before the harvest, yay, and a power bottom. <laughs> <laughs> do he got the booty? He do. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the Book of Booty. <laughs> 517. The Book of Passages Booty. Passages 1 through 4. <laughs> I think I think I got our show title now. <laughs> the Book of Booty. The Book of Booty. The Book of Booty. Oh. So, so I totally believe in free speech, and Parsons and Yeverbaum can say what they want about religion and God. I don't think their opinion should be silenced, and I certainly don't think they should be blown to bits over their form of self-expression, despite the fact that it, def it deeply offends me as a Christian. Okay, good for you. That being said, I disagree with them and think their blasphemous take on God is sickening and distasteful. Okay. How dare you. God! want people to love each other. Mm -hmm. You would Parsons. never just a thing. I know him personally. We're friends. Yes. Parsons' involvement in this project is definitely going to push Christian fans away from his fan base, and rightfully so. I don't know. I, I think I, I'll have to consult Chris, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, my Christian girlfriend again, you know, who who might disagree with you there. Um, isn't, isn't Parsons gay or something? He might be. I don't know. I thought he was. I don't, I don't understand why conservatives would enjoy that show to begin with. Mm. Oh, well, well, there are conservatives that enjoy General Hospital, at least until the one gay couple starts getting frisky on screen. Mm. And then they're like, oh, no, 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 no. And it's like, how many heterosexual couples are on screen getting that frisky, you asshole? You start, you, you pull out, you, anybody who pulls out, think of the children when a heter, when a gay couple gets frisky on daytime TV. I'm going to point them to about 50 other times heterosexual couples get frisky on screen and, and say, yeah, if that's wrong, then so is all of this. So fuck you. Personally, I think Although, You know wrong. the best kind of gay couple, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. is two bears if they have matching beards. I think that's the best thing ever. Oh. oh. They're like, oh, we're bears. Hi, honey, how you doing? Oh, hey, honey. And they have matching beards. I love it. <laughs> Lesbians can't have matching beards because, you know, they have no beards. Oh. You'd have to draw them on with eyeliner. Yeah. <laughs> Get some mascara going. Yes. Like... <laughs> like, like, like you do like you do when you're, like, little. You're like, let's put on a show. I drew a mustache. <laughs> oh, your mom's Lordy. like, oh, my God, that's my, that's my eyeliner. I know. I drew a mustache with it. Oh my god! I'm just I, I am just imagining the, the, a piece of fan art with like with like you and Hagen sitting there with like beers and everything, and Hagen's like, "What the fuck is this shit?" And you're just sitting there all happy and playing with. Like, it's magic. adorable. That's what. And she she like rubs at it and she's like, "Is this eyeliner pencil?" No. How did this happen? I don't. I I have to go. <laughs> yeah. Go trim my beard. There you go. All right. So rather than sit here and bash Parsons, I'd rather express my concern for his soul. It clearly says in the Bible... <laughs> That's the same thing. Yeah. Clearly <laughs> says in the Bible, God will not be mocked, and as God is a just judge, that puts Parsons and others like him in a serious predicament. Oh. His only Imaginary hope... person up in the sky scowling at you. It's pretty serious. Yes. His only hope to get out of the mess he's in is through Jesus. Period. <laughs> through Jesus. Yeah. I know that's not a popular stance and we'll get tons of hate, but that's okay. Actually, your stance is a lot more popular, so shut the fuck up. Uh, my prayer is that God will work in Parson's life to draw him to Jesus and that he will give his give, live a life to honor to his honor and glory. Um, how do you know he's not a Christian? Because I, I don't see anywhere in here whether or not uh, Parson's is Christian. I don't know if he is. I don't know if he isn't. And if he is, then uh, what you're saying there is what, – what what this person is saying is that Parsons Christianity is the wrong Christianity, and he needs to come over to the article writer's Christianity. And if not, well, then he's still – either way, he's still saying, yeah, you need to believe in Christianity and my form of Christianity in particular because God apparently is so thin-skinned he shall not be mocked. Otherwise, he's going to throw a big temper tantrum and, and boot stomp you to hell. I, I don't know if I would want to follow somebody that that is just that thin-skinned. Would you? Mm. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Yeah. So, 
So yeah, this past weekend we had Valentine's Day, and we all know the Fifty Shades of Bullshit that opened. But this is not bullshit. This is actually really sweet, uh, at least as it's presented here. Uh, an Oklahoma boy delivered anonymous candy and Valentine's Day cards to every girl at his school on Friday to make sure no one was feeling left out. Oh, I, I read oh. the story when you when you posted to us. I was like, oh, little lumpkin, that's such a good thing. Yes. Yeah. The student secretly surprised all 1,076 girls at Edmond High School, but eventually, but eventually everyone learned who the Romeo was. Dan Williams, an Eagle Scout who doesn't have a girlfriend of his own, worked all summer to raise up raise enough money for his Valentine's Day surprise. I tell you what, that that status will not last long. Yeah. <laughs> you will have a girlfriend soon. Yeah. Somebody is going to be like, oh, oh. Oh, to know somebody out there cares about them, Dan pondered. That's one of the best feelings in the world, I think. And that is true. What you... a great kid. Good job, kid. You, you're doing it right. Yes, you made over a thousand girls feel even more special because, and you know, and there are a bunch of friends on, like, just on my, on my personal friends list and such. So many people that, that just kind of lament Valentine's Day because they're lonely and, and they feel like nobody cares about them. And have something like this happen, you know, say, hey, you know what, you you know, you do matter. You know, you are, you, 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 here's a Valentine's Day card. I don't want you to feel left out. And, you know, get something like that. They, they would turn into puddles, I think. <laughs> at, le at least, you know. As long as it's like this, and I want to say that uh, that that there was another uh, news outlet or something that was kind of condemning him, like, oh no, he's he's doing this, and it's like, no, fuck you, fuck any fuck any naysayers here, no. Yeah, no, this no, no, this no. kid, he saved up his own money, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, one thing is really telling he's an Eagle Scout. Even when I was a kid, being in Boy Scouts was so not popular. And if you were there long enough to become Eagle Scout, like, you were probably a virgin. But there are some kids that just really, really, really believe in doing the right thing and being a good person. And, and you, you know what? I, I don't think that he did this with selfish intent. No. So good on you, kid. Yeah. We're, we're, we're rooting for you. Yeah, man. So so any, anybody who wants to come at me with naysayers can bring it on. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll take it out in the back. We'll, we'll have words. Oh, definitely have words on that one because that's just so sweet. And and I think I we could probably sum up Kat's feelings to her first little for her first little awe at the beginning of this article. Aww. <laughs> yeah. That is really so awesome. It is. Oh. So we we have to end on a happy note because it was it, it's just that great. Oh, so uh with that, that is we are coming up on the end of our show for this week. Uh, it's been a hell of a week, a hell of a ride. Uh, next week, who knows what'll happen? I don't know what'll happen. Do you know what will happen? I do, because I'm psychic. You are psychic. I'm just not Ooh. telling you. You're just not going to tell me? That's correct. Yeah. Is it, is it going to rain tomorrow? The answer is yes, because it's Ireland and it's always going to rain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, it's I... to the point where if I come out the house and the sun is shining, I get confused. <laughs> like, what? What's happening? How did this happen? Wh wh where am I? Why is this so bright? Ah, I'm Help a vampire! Me, I can't do this. Yes, I'm which, dying. which you know, that actually reminds me. Uh, somebody had submitted a secret. I don't remember if it was like the web review secrets or whatever about somebody, you know, like like some right winger getting getting like really really paranoid about Haganistan and trying to find it on a map or something, or thinking that there actually is a Haganistan that's trying to take over the world or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh god, I would, I would pay to see Fox News take on that one. They're like, yeah, we're still trying to find the nation of Afghanistan. Afghanistan is doing this. Blah, 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 blah. It was like, we Wikipedia it once, and we still can't figure it out. Yeah, because it's Fox News, you know, who even their affiliates nowadays, from what I'm seeing, they're they, <clears throat> like there was one that you were talking about a story of rape or whatever. And they accidentally, not a story of rape, but a guy who got off from a. a not I don't think it was a rape charge. It was some kind of assault charge, though. And the guy was like, you know, you know, declared innocent or whatever, or not guilty or what have you. And under that, there was a, a you know, there was the caption, and above that was a picture of the president. And it's like, um, guys, <laughs> and they didn't even like apologize on air for it until they somebody bitched at them later. It's like, hey, you know, that, that that's that's what the fuck, guys. They're like, oh, uh. That was an accident. Yeah, 
Yeah, that, that, that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's not just the, the main Fox News thing. You know, Fox affiliates are getting in on that too, apparently. From what I, Though I think they're few and far between, as far as I've seen so far. So, so remember how we were going to end the show on a happy note. Yeah, and then, <laughs> then I go and fuck it up. Ah, oh, well. But but you know what? You know what? Reminder of happy note. You know, be like be be like Dan Williams. Be like Dan Williams. You know, spread good things, do good things, be good people. That's what we need to do. Be like him. So um, if we wanted to find the cat on the social media, where could we find her? You can find me on Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And then you can find me on my other shows, What the Fuck, over on uh, – um, uh, oh, hold on. You know what? 1201B. I, 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 I blank <laughs> so hard because I have to say – this show more than I have to say that show. Yeah, on 1201beyond.com, and then you can find my other other show, Nerd to the Third Power, over on channelawesome.com and This Week in Geek. Ooh, This Week in Geek. That, 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 that's, that, is that the new uh, site for that one? or? Uh, we, uh, we're we now uh, hosting uh, on This Week in Geek with over, you know, because Mike Dodd is awesome. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And if we wanted to find the Omega, where could we find her? You can find me on the Twitters at the Omega Geek. I have a dot com. It's omegageek.com. I have shows on, of course, your site. Uh, sometimes I do stuff for Nerdvice. Uh, you can find most of my things on Channel Awesome. And I think that's everything. Yes. And if you wanted to find me on the social medias, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers at Gomer21XX. You can find my stuff and also Omega stuff on RTGomer.com and on NerdVice.com. And if you want to, you know, get get in touch with us or what have you, both NerdVice and RT Gomer Productions do have their own Facebook pages, as do I. I have my own personal Facebook page, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, where right now it's pretty much just show updates, but, you know, audience interaction, I wouldn't mind that a little bit more. Um, I'll, I'll try and think of some things to do. Uh, again, if you wanted to send in like questions or feedback to the show, uh, just hit the Thespian Talk Tumblr, thespiantalk.dumblr.com. We do have an ask box. The anonymous is on, so if you want to send in an anonymous thing, you know you can do so, and we'll even read it out on the show. We've done it before. Didn't have any this week, unfortunately, but hey, you know the box is always open. Uh, links to everything will be below if you're watching this on like YouTube or, or one of the sites or whatever where that's possible. Um, and a big special thanks to all my patrons out there because, you know, I don't thank them enough and I really should thank them more. Um, so, uh, you know, without them, uh, this show, it would, it would be a little bit more difficult for this show to be a thing without them. Um, so anyway, thank you guys for listening and we will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with the Cat and the Omega, signing off. Thespian Talk is an R.T. Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit RTGomer.com for more great shows.